he's going to do old Joe. I used to wonder why folks use these. I mean, if you're going to fall, what good is a stick going to do for you? You lose your sense of where down is. Two feet are not enough. For the third thing, you can figure out down must be somewhere in that direction. <laughs> Had a near-death experience. Came back with more questions and no answers. Why do they call it a near-death experience? I mean, if you come back, how near death could it have been? Now, catching your parents doing it. <laughs> That's a near-death experience. <laughs> there aren't too many advantages to getting old. One of them is that you have a ready excuse for your indiscretions. <laughs> That's why both youth and old age use diapers. <laughs> Another advantage is that uh, you learn to appreciate little things. A good chair is better than sex. Third one is you get to tell old jokes. That's not jokes that are old. That's jokes about old people. So how old are you? I don't like to say how old I am. But when I was a kid, there was only one continent. No. The one before that, Rodinia. Back in those days, I only had one cell. Reproduced by splitting. Boring. But the world was thawing out from being a snowball. So I invented sex. To get warm. Never thought it might be good for other things. I'm so old that most of the th sayings attributed to others were probably first said by me, but I don't remember which ones. I can believe that last part. I'm so old that uh, if I were a grandfather clock, the shadow of my pendulum would have worn a hole in the back of the case. When I was born, we had different constellations. Did you ever get married? When I was young, we bought into the rightness of first completing your education, then establishing your career, then courting, then marrying, then having sex, then having kids, and putting them all through college. Now people start with the sex, I work backwards. So, did you ever get married? I'm still working on completing my education. <laughs> now, I'm not so old that I can't appreciate a good-looking woman. 
I just don't remember what it is we like to do together. <laughs> now, women my age are beginning to appreciate me. They uh, seem to like me to help them take care of their granddaughters. Maybe they think you were harmless. They've always thought I was harmless. Isn't that a good thing? So are you seeing anyone? Well, I'm going out with ladies, but uh, I don't think any of us can see each other very well anymore. <laughs> so what do you do when you go out with these ladies? We talk. What do you talk about? Her children, her diseases, <laughs> her grandchildren, her medications, her great-grandchildren, her operations, her friends that have died recently. So what about yourself do you talk about? My diseases, <laughs> my medications, my operations, my friends who have died recently. As anyone? People are for companionship. Like cats. If you want love, get a dog. <laughs> Do you ever talk about the future? What future? I'm glad it's almost over. Now it's your turn to, you young folks, to screw it up. You sound bitter. I'm not. Uh, I've led a good life, I've tried to make a difference, made a few mistakes, which were interesting. Uh, I'm disappointed in others, but not in myself. So do you have any advice for the youngsters? Charm the medical staff. <laughs> Anything else? You're not paranoid. The universe really is out to get you. <laughs> nothing, almost nothing, ever works out the way you expect it to, unless you were expected to work out differently. And uh, in the end, uh, we have to ask ourselves, you know, it's the, the poet D Dylan said, uh, you know, do not go softly, gently into that, that, that night. What a crock. When it's your time to go, it's either going to be too quick or too hectic. If you've got anything to say, you better say it well before that point. And, uh, the best gift you could give someone you're about to lose is laughter. If you can't do anything else, you can exit laughing.